Hey! Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jade Monkey. We're back here in Rust to talk about that Rust console edition for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, Next Generations, and everything in between. And today's a special topic. We've got how to power your turrets as the Rust console edition power surge or power update. Electricity is now live for the public testing branch. If you have Deluxe or Ultimate, you can download this bad boy. All you got to do is search for a Rust console edition public testing branch. Or if you have the base version, there is an upgrade path. Just look for Rust dark camo combat pack and make sure that it says Rust console edition public testing branch inside of the bundle. And if you do that there, you should be able to download the Rust public testing branch, which has the power surge on it. Okay, so let's wind into this here. And also, as we go through this, there will be chapters down below, so you should be able to jump between these different examples because these should be real-world examples that you guys can use to set up your turrets because the first thing that's going to happen when you get started is you're going to put down a turret and go, what? Why is there no weapon in there? How do I turn this thing on? What's the best way to do it? Where do I find these parts? What's happening? Okay, so first and foremost, let me just kind of show you the first setup here. So what you want to do is we do have the customizable turrets, which are beautiful. You can stick all kinds of things in here. You can stick a nail gun in there. You can stick a Revy in there. You can stick an M249. You can not stick a rocket launcher in there. Believe me, we've tried. Uh, but in this example, we'll put down an MP5, and then we'll also stick some ammo in there. But you're like, okay, cool, but it's not doing anything. Well... The first thing you need to know about all turrets are, well, first of all, you need to be authorized, but second of all, they take 10 units of power or more. And if you have the wire tool out, and you look on the back part of the auto turret, you'll see a spot that says power in, you'll see a spot that says has target, you'll see another one that says low ammo, and another one that says no ammo. For this particular one, just to plug it in, it's just we're going to talk about power in on this particular video. But if you need some uh, a rundown on the electricity and the basics of power and electricity, uh, might I point you towards the Rust Powered Basics. I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner. Deloop! And it, that's okay if you want to watch the rest of this. We'll also put this up on the end screen at the end of the video as well. Because um, it's going to cover a lot more of these topics. So you're like, hey, what battery does what? So we'll just cover the basics here or like the baseline stuff for turrets. Okay, so each turret's going to take 10 units of power. So we have uh, different ways, uh, different types of batteries we can use to plug in there. So this one, uh, if you look there, it says maximum output 10. Well, you're like, hey, uh, the turret takes 10. So yes, you can take the output, so the red node, and plug it right into the turret, and it should go right on. But the thing is, if you hold your wire tool out and you look closely, it says charge left. 14 minutes 55 seconds and it's counting down active usage 10 maximum output 10 and capacity dropping rapidly maximum being 150 rust watt minutes and that's the huge change not only do you have to power it and equip it you now have to maintain a level of power and uh, run time for this bad boy so here's the thing you're like okay that's cool let me put an off switch on this and make it uh, run that way right you're like, yeah, that makes sense. So you take your cable, you plug it in the bottom of the switch, you take the output, and you plug it right into the turret. Now what? Hey, it doesn't work. Let me turn it on. Still doesn't work. Why is that? Well, that's because this battery's maximum output is 10. And every component takes at least one unit of power when it's active. So you'll see, uh, since this takes 10, if you backtrack it and go right here, that's going to take one, so that puts us at 11. So the only thing really operating here is going to be the switch and nothing else can work so if you're going to use a small battery like this i would suggest that you have the wire tool close by and because the only way you can turn this off to authorize or reload this bad boy is to be with a wire tool so you'll have to disconnect it manually in a pinch it'll work but i would also make sure that you have this plugged into something else i.e like um a wind turbine but it is a bit of overkill because the maximum input on a battery is 40 rust power units so if we kind of take the power tool here and go upstairs, we can plug this into the wind turbine, and this should be more than enough. But it is overkill, by a long shot. <laughs> but if you need things to work right away, that'll definitely do it. A lot of times you'll see this kind of plugged into a solar panel array like this, uh, with a root combiner, and then you have it running over to the turret itself. And that's usually enough, because what you want is to have enough runtime for the night. Because when the solar panels are active, they're great, so this would be morning and this would be afternoon. But then nighttime, you're not going to have any power, so this small car battery should be enough to maintain that. Although the power coming in from the wind turbine is 101, so realistically, you're going to want to bring down uh, this power from the uh, top of the solar panels, because that's going to be a lot better for you. And it's maximum power output, so uh, for each of these solar panels is 20, so maximum is 40. 
um, at the right time of the day. So that's the maximum for a battery. So it's a good way to get started. It gives you the buffer um, because it'll run you through the nighttime because night times are roughly 10 minutes. So that's a good way to get started. But more realistically, like th you could use this in a pinch, right? If you needed like 15 minutes of coverage or whatever. But typically you'll see things like um, a medium battery where you've got your solar panels here and uh, Normally, you'd have four of these bad boys, but uh, like just to get you started, you'd bring in, you know what, let me make this red. You'd have your solar panels or wind turbine, wherever your power is. You bring it in downstairs to your medium battery. We'll go ahead and just bring it around the lip of the ceiling here and bring it down to the battery itself. Now, I kind of leave the marching ants back here so you guys can kind of see what's going on. So this battery already has a little bit of a charge, but you can already see its maximum output is much larger than the other one, right? Because the, the small car battery only had 10. So you know each turret's going to take at least 10 units of power. And if you have any logic or control piece that goes in between there, and you will need it if you have multiple turrets, it's going to be more than that. So in this case, you would probably think to yourself, hey, the maximum uh, turrets you can put on here is, is five. Incorrect. Because you would need a splitter, a branch, something to split the signal, and already that's going to knock you down to 49 or 48, which means you can only have a maximum of four. And that indeed is the maximum you can plug in to a, uh, a medium battery. But anyways, we'll show you the, the single usage here. And then the next example will show you the one with three batteries, or three, I'm sorry, three turrets on one medium battery. But I just want to show you, like, in most cases, you're going uh, to find a car battery, charge them up. You can always charge them and then pick them up. They maintain the charge. It's always good to have extra power. Consider it a resource. But more realistically, you're probably going to either find a medium battery or go to the bandit camp and purchase it for 75 scrap or craft it if you're rich. Uh, but usually you have this on a trickle charge, so like your solar panels here, and then when you start to get turrets, then you start to use it. But hey, if you're lucky enough to get two of these, make sure you pick up the full one, stick it in a box, and uh, place down the, the empty one, and then charge that one as well. So anyways, okay, so this is what it's going to look like. So in most cases, right, because this one's kind of goofy, right, because you, you have to basically turn it off like this, and then you can dig in it. Uh, but this one is a lot better because you can do a lot more things with it. So let's go ahead and... Um, I guess this is two examples, isn't it? Um, well I guess we'll place another turret out here. This will be the one that we have powered. So uh, this is what, it, you'll always hear me say this, and I know this is not really turret based, but it kind of is. Always have a switch coming out of your main battery that comes out because it'll always stop any slow like bleed of electricity. And because when this is off, this actually doesn't use a unit of power, but when it's on, it does. So it's just a nice way to control like what's going on with your uh, power. So we'll make this different color so you can kind of see what's going on. The red is the input. We'll bring the yellow down to the turret itself. And you can see it right here. And so now what we can do is we can cleanly stick any kind of weapon we want in here. But um, this is still plugged in. It just has the potential of putting out 50 units of power. Now that we have it turned on, now we're using 11 uh, units of power because this is 10. You back it up to the switch. That's one. So that's 11 total. So we ha our runtime now is 5 hours, 56 minutes, and 50 seconds. And you can see our capacity could go up from here. What that means is basically we can stick more things up here to charge the battery. So in this case, um, let's go ahead and just take the wind turbine and slap them all together. So we'll take the output of this. I know, it's, it's crazy, right? You look at this going, what? That's why I had the other uh, tutorial kind of up there because it's... Um, there's a lot to this, and you definitely want to practice this the best you can. If you're rich on a wipe, uh, start playing around with this kind of stuff. It's really going to uh, help you out a lot. If you have a chance to get into Builder's Paradise, do so. Always, always, always start charging your batteries as soon as, as, soon as possible. So now our input is 141, which is crazy. So now you'll see our, our charge left actually is going up slowly. And it goes down and then it goes up because our capacity now is being charged because our input is way higher than our output. And just so you know, the maximum in on this one you can put is 200 units on a medium battery. So anything above that's going to be a waste. But in this case, we're, we're pretty well balanced. And uh, we're going to have a nice 9,000 rust watt minute charge. And since we have a wind turbine and two solar panels, this can probably keep you going even if you're offline. But this is only for one turret. Uh, but what's cool here is if you need to conserve your power, like if you're not ch uh, bringing in enough charge here, you can always turn this off. But it's 
Also, it not only important to save your power, but you need to be able to turn this bad boy off because you need to be able to stick more bullets inside and then authorize your homies or else they're going to get whacked. Crazy, right? Okay, let's go on to the next example that uses, excuse me, example that uses a medium battery and then three active turrets. And then a little space for something else, like, you know, lights. Because now those lamps don't take low grade anymore, now do they? Don't forget, we'll have this sign up at the very end on the end screen, so if you need to check that out. If you'd like to support the channel above and beyond, uh, you can always uh, shop the merch. It supports me, the channel. It's right under this video. You'll see a little picture of a t-shirt. You can shop right inside of YouTube. Uh, whether you're on the browser or the mobile application. So there you go. Thank you very much. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, puberty. All right. So we have kind of the same example here. And we have some of these uh, solar panels that are coming in. But let's go ahead. Did I actually, is this the sample or is it, did I miss? I missed one. This is it. <laughs> I went over too far. Here we go. All right. Same kind of setup, right? We have solar panels and just, it could be any kind of uh, source power, right? Um, going into a medium battery. So what we're doing here is we're going to switch this off to uh, multiple turrets, but then also lights. Uh, first, we'll start with the multiple turrets. So it's, it's the same idea we had before. We'll take the green line out like this. We'll bring it. You know what? Let's make this blue. And by the way, if you'd like to know how to change the color on your wire tool, it's the reload key. I know. It's actually quite helpful. So as we said before, always take your power out to a switch. And in this case, we're going to go to a splitter. Now, remember what I said before, that each component uses a unit of power when it's active. So when this is turned on, this will use a unit of power. And then this splitter will also use a unit of power. The thing about the splitter is anything that comes out of here will be split evenly based off of how many connections are actually active. So we will make this active for all uh, three of these. Let's go ahead and make this one yellow. We'll kind of walk this one over here. I am a big fan of using more switches, though, to be honest. Because you're going to want this out by your... You know what I mean? Like, if this is out on the wing of your base, you want to make sure that this is active so you can shut it off. And there's sometimes people are draining your turrets, or there's just a lot of reasons why you want to have a switch. So that side's going there, yellow. Let's go ahead and take our red side here. We're running out of colors bring it up under here and again uh, another not again i haven't said this yet but i've said this in other videos make sure that your wires i know we have our our root combiners and stuff on this rooftop here a lot of times uh, most of the time you're going to want this on the inside on the roof tile and then you want to connect these on the ceiling tile so people don't know where your power cabinet is at it is important and you don't want people bopping on this either like these can take some deeps and so can these but really you want to have the least amount of things exposed at once so i just have this out here so you guys can kind of understand what's happening here so we have two solar panels day and night going into the root combiner Okay, let's go ahead and make this little dode green. Oh yeah, there we go. We got one hiding under there. Okay, so what's great about this, and again, I like to have this switch because it stops the bleed. Um, now that we have this going in, now we have, or we will have, active turrets on each of these nodes here. So we can put a maximum of 16 power units on each of these nodes and it will work. So in this case, that's active. And look at our power drain on our battery. Now we have 23. You're like, wait a minute, we didn't activate one. Well, the red line, we didn't stick a switch on. So you know what, let's actually change that real fast. Having control over your power is paramount. It really is. And this is probably the most uh, common setup you're going to have for most bases because you'll start with three and then you can kind of expand off of that. Uh, but, you know, you can get good coverage with this kind of setup. And what's cool here is if you look at the maximum bleed here, now we have 13 because we only have this unit here active and then the switch and this turret, which is exactly 13. But if we turn this on, now we have two active turrets and now you look at the drain is now 24 power units and our look at our charge time. That's our run time for our turrets is now three hours and 42 minutes. So you can start to see why you really want to have this kind of control. But what's great is if, let's say you're like, hey, these, these are my area turrets, and I need these to always be on, or I need them to be on at the same time. Well, that's cool. Just use this switch then. 
to all go on and off at the same time. It just gives you more control. So if you look, when all of the turrets are on, you're using 35 units of power. You can add one more turret if you'd like to, or in this case, we're going to do something a little bit more advanced. Check this out. We're going to add a branch and then a few lights on top here. Because this is also very realistic, especially that the farming is coming in relatively soon. If you'd like to know about the farming, custom servers, and what was the other one? Horses. Uh, we've already done a video on that. I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner. Deloop! you want to go check that bad boy out but having lights on the interior to grow things is going to be a thing for sure okay in this case do we use yellow do we use red yeah, i guess we'll use uh yeah i guess we'll use blue okay what's cool with the branch is and again that uh, tutorial we have will definitely guide you in this the left hand side is the priority so if we shave off if these are two a piece so that's six total we can shave off six units of power on the left go to the ceiling lamps pass through power in Oop, where's the pass through there we go and then power uh. so okay so this this is the main switch so actually you can turn this off at all times which is uh, again needed but since this main power goes out to the branch we have six units of power always going off to the left no matter what then the remainder comes off of the right-hand side of the branch, and then that goes into the splitter. And that should be enough, 13 apiece, to run these. Because remember, the switch is one, and then this turret is one. Or, er, 10, jeez. So we're looking at 11 for this cluster, and 11 for this one, and 11 for the green line. So right now, with all of the lights, all of our components and turrets currently active, this medium battery is sustaining all of those things with a little bit of headroom. And we have 41 units of power actively being used. We can run this for two and a half hours. And the battery is like a third charged, maybe. A little bit over a third charged. So if you start to add more things like solar panels on the top, you can really stay on top of this. So uh, I don't know if I said this before, but in many cases, if you're going to use a medium battery, I like to use... I'll go ahead and just show you. I like to use uh, four solar panels. I put one at the northeast, and then I put one at the southwest. So you have morning and afternoon. So you have a total of four of these bad boys, and that's a good way to start charging your battery. And then if you feel like you're kind of behind, like you're not having enough input on your battery itself, then go ahead and add another two. I usually add them in, in units of two. But hey, if you're poor and just getting started, there's no shame in just putting up one solar panel and just starting to charge slow. Like, it, it, you'll see us do it all the time. I'm going to do this a little bit sloppily so you guys can see what's going on here. Rig combiners are the best. Oops. And we'll take this one here, and then we'll combine it one more time. So then you just have good coverage. So usually midday is about your best time where you have the most power that comes in. And a lot of times, well, we said this before, but make sure all of these are on the ceiling tile. It's just a lot easier to demonstrate all this stuff when it's nice and splayed out. Okay, so now midday, we're getting an input of 80 units of power from our solar panels. That's crazy. And just know that it drops off at nighttime, but that's more than enough. With the power we're using right now with everything on is 41 units, and we're getting 80. So no matter what we do, even if everything's on, we're going to get capacity on this. That's great. So we could even have like a large battery plugged into this. So there you go. Those are the basic setups that we have for uh, powering a turret. We'll have more advanced pieces here. Uh, be sure to leave your questions, comments down below. I'll be reading those. Let me know if you guys are having trouble with anything or anything else that we missed here. Um, definitely interested in what you guys have to uh, say about this and what you guys are looking for as uh, the, the possibilities are endless with Power Surge, and it's so much fun. I can't wait for you guys to jump into it, so uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to check out the Power Rust Power Basics. We'll throw that up on the end screen now, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.